This is the result of the last two weeks of work. A battery spot welder. So is it yet another battery spot welder or is it the next level? You decide. So the first problem that you have to solve when you develop a spot welder is to find a power source that is capable enough. Many designs use um, capacitors or high power transformers or lead acid batteries. And I thought make it another try and use one of these. These are lithium polymer batteries and they already say high discharge lipo battery. And if you can read this, it says 50 C discharge. So for five amp hours, this is a rated current of 250 amps. And I thought it would be a good start if I want to find a power source that is capable of doing currents in excess of one kilo amp. First tests were promising and it definitely exceeds 1000 amps. So I think it's enough. This is the plus voltage going in that's the fuse rated for 300 amps it's okay because it can sustain 1000 amps for more than one second before blowing and we don't want to have longer times and goes out to the positive lead comes back to the negative lead switch transistors and then going back to the battery here you can see the design of the power traces it's a double-sided um, PCB here, so same on the other side, and the current path here is completely solid. You cannot see it here, but it's only one big trace going from all the way down to here, and the same on the other side. So I'm quite confident that it will hold the current. And then you can see that the PCB traces are sandwiched by brass this one has threads metric threads and all the screws going through so of course the unit also has a microprocessor it's underneath here somewhere and the microprocessor does not only switch on and off the mosfets but it also measures voltage and current and what this is for you will see later and what is else um, there's a potentiometer it has a beeper and it has an LCD that shows the status. And as you can see, it does not have an auxiliary power supply input. It gets everything directly from the battery. And this capacitor is for hold up during the pulse firing. One note to the transistors. I have chosen MOSFETs that are as large as possible. And I mean physically large because during the switch process, energy goes into the silicon dies and heats them up very quickly and the dies need to be as large as possible so that they can take the energy without melting and these six transistors together can take almost seven joules of pulse energy of instantaneous energy uh, without overheating so i think it will be a quite reliable unit and i will demonstrate this by doing some long term tests hopefully the battery will survive long enough because I think that this is the weakest part of the system. The transistors are also large enough so that I can live without a freewheeling diet that is present on many other comparable systems. And you have some beefy cables and oops. I also machined electrode holders. Oh, that's the wrong way. and also from the same copper bars that uh, I use for the bus bars so recycling the stuff and I want to show you it's easy to replace the copper electrodes just unscrew these two here and then you get it out put it in fasten them again there you go. What's missing? Of course, a foot switch. And that's it. Now let's power it up. So first, make sure that the electrodes don't touch. Oh, by the way, um, it will, of course, receive some heat shrink tubing. I just removed it to show you the construction. 
So I have to be very careful here now. Okay. Use in. When you look at the LCD, you see energy is 184 joules. That means that you don't set a pulse time in milliseconds. You set the energy that you want to deposit into your spot. You can see here. It goes up to 500 joules. I found by some test wells on a real battery that um, a 150 joules seems to be a good value. The idea behind this is to get consistent spots because you don't rely on the resistance and the cleanness of your weld material. As long as the energy goes where it should go, um, you should get consistent welds all the time. I can show you what happens on a battery. It's already a bit damaged because I did some tests already. So this is this is 0.1 millimeter stuff. How's that called? Illumin tape. And so I go put the switch underneath. Oh, this is a little bit too much. I go to 150. And as you can see, that's, that's the clean weld. It doesn't go off again. It's not possible. I will damage the battery. And as a bonus, it has an additional feature that starts when you power it on. If you press the put switch while powering it on, it says auto, it goes into automatic mode, which means that you don't need this foot switch, you just press down the electrodes. You can hear it sounding, it means it's now armed. Like this. So you can be very fast when you're producing your battery packs. What's also important is that the unit has a calibration method because when it wants to measure the energy that is dumped into the weld spot, it needs to subtract the energy that is lost in the cable, of course. So it needs to know the resistance of the cable. And that's going like this. Turn it on in manual mode. Turn the dial all the way left and it says cal. Cut myself already. And then you press the foot switch once. It says open. Now it expects that you open the connection between the two electrodes. Press the foot switch once. Now you have to short it. The best way to do it is to unscrew these and plug the one electrode into the other hole. But I found that firmly pressing is doing already close to perfect. And I keep the foot switch down and it says 1.96 milliohms resistance in the leads. That's a reasonable value. And that's it. Now it's storing its calibration in flash memory. So it is made persistent. Also worth to mention is that because I measure the energy that goes into the weld spot, the system can also detect if the welding process has failed. So if I, for example, make a mistake and don't touch it correctly, oops, you can hear a sound indicating that something has gone wrong. Another nice thing which I didn't show yet is once you make a weld and, and you keep down the trigger, it gives some more information. It says 55 milliseconds uh, was the required pulse time. And it also shows 3.74 milliohms 
the measured resistance of the spot itself, of the weld spot itself. So you get some statistics and can learn uh, how to perfect uh, your welding process by getting these numbers. I hope you enjoyed.